That's why you come into churches. The rich people sit in front and the poor people sit at the back. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. The other day I was just thinking about this. Thing. It's sad. It is really sad, the state of Christianity. If you think about it, like these are the things that come to my mind sometimes. You know, sometimes you hear one pastor say, I stand with pastor this. Oh, I stand with pastor that and everything. It's not true. They're all, they're all lies. They don't stand with each other. They don't. You know, they don't stand with each other. Let me tell you something you have to realize. If these pastors actually stand with that pastor and that pastor, can you tell me why do they, why? If we, we why? If Since we're reading the same Bible, why have they not merged together and be one church? Why? You know, we all know how in Nigeria, a two-story building, you'll find on the first floor is maybe redeemed. The next one is maybe Winner's Chapel. And you find the one floor is this church and the next one and the next one. Why do they not merge together? Why are they different churches? I remember when I moved to a particular remote area in Lagos and uh, there is Winner's Chapel and then there's Redeem. And I found that the people that go to Winner's and the people that go to Redeem were not friends. They were not friends. They were not getting along well at all. And I used to be confused. How can you guys not get along well? It not be the same God we deserve, you know? And all these big, big pastors, they claim to stand by each other. I stand by this and I stand by that one. Why can't the churches be the same? Is it not the same Bible? You know, think about it. Is it not the same Bible? But do you know why they don't join together and make it one? Because it's a business. It's a business. You can't join business together because everybody is thinking about their own pockets. Think about our Christianity in Nigeria. You know, when you think about all this, all the things, something else I actually wanted to address is this. When you make a video about that pastor or that pastor, what they've done, that you show them that Bible does not support it, no problem. But it's only when you then talk about your pastor, that's when there's a problem. So everybody tells you, how dare you say that about my daddy and Lord? How dare you say this? But let, let's not forget, the Bible said that there'll be false prophets. The Bible said it, that there'll be false prophets. So me now, my pastor is not the false prophet. Your pastor is not the false prophet. And that pastor is not the false prophet. That pastor is not the false prophet. So where is the false prophet the Bible talked about then? Nobody's pastor is the false prophet. So where are the false prophets the Bible talked about? The Bible does not lie. So they exist. They exist. I can bet you that the real false prophet that the Bible talked about, they exist. And their church members support them. And they have a church. People believe that they are not false prophets. This is the question we have, you should be asking. Where are the false prophets the Bible talk about, talked about? It's not your pastor, it's not my pastor, it's not that pastor, it's not that pastor. Which pastor? Which pastor then is the false prophet the Bible talked about? How should we know them? The Bible told us how we should know them. Why didn't you write him a letter and tell him your, your, what you think? Why did you... <laughs> Nigerian pastors. Nigerian pastors. <clears throat> Nigerian pastors, they are a God to themselves. <clears throat> You know, they regard to themselves. I'm not going to start listing names. The other thing that there was this pastor that, you know, there was something he did. Then they found out that, eventually found out that he made a mistake. He, he passed the wrong information to his church members. And then the thing came out in the news and everything that his information was incorrect. You should, you should still hear the way he was talking and being defensive. I'm sorry, but I haven't seen a Nigerian pastor that you're going to call on the phone and be like, hey, you know that thing you did is wrong, go. And he's going to tell you thank you. Hey, one, you know, those of you that keep telling me, you, you know, just ring the pastor and tell him or write him a letter. Write them a letter and get back to me and let me know how you got it through. Let me tell you, a lot of these mega pastors do not answer their own phone calls. I went to Bible college and part of our training, we did the answering of the phone calls. We would pray for you over the phone. We would take your prayer requests. We answer questions. You know, it's part of our training. As you're finishing, part of your internship, you answer phone calls, you answer questions, you know, you reply to, you know, you pray for people over the phone, you take prayer requests, and all of these things. All these mega pastors do not answer phone calls directly. No. So the, the message has to go through the junior pastors or whatever. And I can guarantee you that the junior pastors will hear you and be like, hey, you, like, who are you to be ringing me to tell me, to tell my G.O.? that what he said is wrong or the way he behaved is wrong you know so i don't understand some of you reason reason oh so my wife should have just called the pastor and tell him nigerian pastors that's not possible how you could how many of them how many of them can you ring and tell you know think about it sometimes it breaks my heart think about it people that are saying that they are men and women of god they will build a school 
that the everyday man cannot afford. There was a while back now, there was this, a while back where there was this post on Facebook where a church member of one of these churches, you know, one of the big churches, uh, he talked about, he works in the church. And he said, I, my salary would not allow me to afford the school of the church. My salary would not allow me to afford to pay for my children to attend the school of the church. So the church workers are being paid so little that they cannot afford the schools of the churches you know ask yourself these churches keep making money they are investing into too many things you know into so many things they are building primary school secondary school university universities and they're building all these things and then they make it really affordable to the rich you know I, I feel like I'm sounding like a broken record at this point they are, you know only the wealthy stinkily rich people something else I really want you guys to think about have you ever wondered why a lot of these pastors before you know it, their sons and their children are being trained in the ministry. Are being trained in the ministry and they are hanging around. A lot of this ministry, but when the pastor died, their family members take over. Why is that happening? Why? Their family members take over. So it becomes, it's basically a family empire. It is not, it is not really, you know, a service to God. No, they are building empires for their families. And made videos where I ask, I ask that question. What do you think? The mansions they are building and the several cars and all these empires, several schools and all this expensive whatever. Where do you think they will, where do you, who do you think inherits that when these people die? It's their families. Their families inherit these things. Now, I believe that when it comes to a man of God, you know, that is after the work of God. Um, I, I, I've made a video where I explain that the pastor doesn't have to be poor or rich or whatever. You know, they should have all the things that they need and stuff like that. But when, when you get too much, when it gets too much, money, money and wealth can distract. It can't distract. I made a video where I talked about how in my in my language we say a cool wage you are for. Earthly wealth does not satisfy. The more you have, the more you're gonna want. The more you have, the more you're gonna want. Money can distract people. Even if they started well, money can distract people so much. I believe that's the reason why Jesus came and he led a simple life. Jesus, Jesus was not about that. Jesus was about spiritual growth and Christian living and stuff like that. But these days, you know, they promote too much of money, money, money. And it's a big distraction. It is a big distraction. I don't know how these pastors, you know, a lot of them started. You know, a lot of them have completely faced a different direction. I, it just breaks my heart. Like, you see all these pastors, like they would drive into church in these expensive cars and everything. And a lot of the people that are coming in, you know, that are wearing slippers, flip-flops, slippers into church. They trek to church and they trek back. And you see beggars, in, you know, you see beggars on the street, you know, in front of the church. Some people are so poor among them, but they are rich and they have private jet or whatever they have. And they can never, you know, they can never be poor in their lives. Children and their children's children are already made for life. You know, there are a lot of things in our churches we have to start questioning. We are obsessed with money and wealth so much. Obsessed, obsessed with it. You know, that is the measurement of success. That's why a lot of the pastors preach it. You know, God will multiply your money. God will diss your money. Everything is money, 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 money. You know, no longer about spiritual life. That's why you come into churches. The rich people sit in front and the poor people sit at the back. Because we're all after things that do not matter. Like, because we're, we're obsessed with money. I've made a video where I explain that this our Nigerian obsession with money. I, ju I just want to make it mentality. It is being promoted or even all the way from the top in the churches. Think about it. That is why, look, think, look at our country. Look at our country. Uh, look at our country. Ritual killings. People want to make juju money. What about, you know, prostitution? Nigeria is one of the biggest exporters of, of uh, what's it called? Prostitutes to Italy. Huh? What about, you know, Yahoo Yahoo boys? You don't hear pastors preach contentment anymore. It's all about have more and have more. Blessings of God in your life is, is measured by earthly things and, you know, earthly thing and all this flashy this and flashy that and whatever. I made a video the other day and I shared my living room, which is simple living room, very basic. I put only what I need. I don't need to buy anything else. And somebody left me a comment and said, uh, instead of saying that I'm, instead, instead of me to say that I'm poor, I'm claiming that I'm trying to be simple. <laughs> that you are poor, you have no money to buy 
things uh, you're claiming that you're you're simple i just laughed my head off and i just couldn't stop laughing there's nothing missing in my sitting room you know we don't need we don't need i said i don't want to be getting what i don't need this is the typical nigerian mentality oh it's of you to say that you're poor oh by the way i've never said that i'm wealthy I've never said so. A lot of these videos are not necessarily to really speak to the pastors, really. You find they, they watch the videos or whatever, but it's not necessarily that. Sometimes, you know, a lot of these videos are actually to let those people that are, you know, a lot of my videos, I will show you what the Bible says and I'll be like, okay, it's contrary to what this pastor is trying to tell you guys. You know, what I'm saying is that to let other people that are watching, you know, there are a lot of people that will be like, like for example, when a pastor makes a video and he's cursing, and I show you in the Bible where Bible... You know does not bible is against that the bible says to bless those that curse you you know but uh, this pastor is cursing when i do that i'm showing you not to follow this pastor because he's not perfect of course he's not he you know he's getting it wrong but i'm showing people don't don't copy him copy what the bible says so it's not necessarily about the pastor it's about you know opening other people's eyes to not follow this path it's like if a pastor is walking on the wrong path and you tell other people oh my goodness don't follow him where he's going is the wrong direction yeah. anyways i just thought i should come here and make this video and just say uh, we really need to start praying really hard you know the way things are going in our churches these days mm, they're very sad very very sad really have to be careful a lot of things are going the wrong direction a lot of things are going the wrong direction it just i feel like the churches have allowed money to distract them so much it is that you know i'm not going to start saying a lot of things i've said in other videos about how the disciples handled money and, and stuff like that even jesus and the, and, the, and the apostles they lived very simple life and you know simple life and they focused on what really mattered but uh, these days you know, it, it it breaks your heart when you see the way Christianity is going. Um, it just breaks your heart. I just, you know, some of these things came to my mind today. I just thought to myself, um, let me just come here and make a video. And I just talk about it. And just more people should start thinking about it. Don't forget. You know, so people be like, oh, it's a big church. It's, it's, uh, don't forget that Bible says that, you know, narrow is the way. You know what I mean? The Bible makes it clear that a lot of people will troop into the wrong direction. Into the wrong direction. Only few. Will follow the right one and when you so that's why sometimes be careful when you get excited about mega churches it doesn't necessarily mean doesn't necessarily mean that they're going in the right direction i'm just going to end this video by saying what i always like to say and i'm just basically saying let's be careful read your bible and know what the bible says not what i said i can backslide tomorrow please god i don't but i can anybody can be pulled out of the right path it can happen to anyone but even if i come here tomorrow and i'm saying something different you should know the bible enough to be able to say my oh, goodness summer is wrong what's happening to her she's changing you know what she's saying what she's saying is incorrect you should be able to know that. So it's not about what your pastor says or whatever. Begin to read the Bible and know the word of God for yourself. And at the end of the day, do not forget, salvation is personal. And with that, I'm just going to say thank you all for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. It's goodbye, friends. And goodbye, folks.